Hello, hello everyone. How are you all today? I'm really excited to talk to you all about hyaluronic acid. What do we need to know about it? And this masterclass was inspired by Jenny. And Jenny asked me, what, what is this hyaluronic acid? I hear about it in fillers. I hear about it in skincare. I hear that we need to be consuming it. What is hyaluronic acid? And how can we reap the benefits of it to have a better skin and more hydrated skin and all of that? Hello, Coralie, Gabby. Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Jody, Carrie, Rochelle. Hey, Susan. Hi, Tamara, Bailey, Marie, and Pamela. Some beautiful names and faces here. Great to see you all. We have lots of one-on-one -on -one clients, uh, skin care tutorial members, School of Radiance members, and also some new faces. So welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Rachel Varga, and I'm a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. And since 2011, I have performed over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures. One of the things I love to do is nerd out on how we can get the best skin of our lives. And it actually doesn't come from just showing up and getting things like dermal fillers done and using antioxidant serums is so much deeper than that. But I am going to demystify this concept of hyaluronic acid in this masterclass. I'm just going to put my mic on. And before we kick things off, just let me know that you can hear me and see me perfectly, that this live stream is behaving. So I, I really encourage you all to be active in the chat. Let me know some things that you're finding really interesting as we move through this lesson. And also let me know any questions that you have. That's the whole beauty about joining these masterclasses when they're live is you have the opportunity to ask me questions. And the questions that you ask actually oftentimes get me out of my practitioner researcher brain into the questions that are most important and relevant to you. Welcome everyone to today's masterclass on hyaluronic acid. What is it? How does it help the skin? How do we access it? What is hyaluronic acid in dermal fillers? What about hyaluronic acid in serums? And how can we actually consume hydration to better support our skin. That's what hyaluronic acid does. Hyaluronic acid is a molecule that is hydrophilic. It's hydrophilic, meaning that for one molecule of hyaluronic acid, a ton of other water molecules bind to it. So it has this hydrating component in skincare and antioxidant serums because it actually will pull moisture from the air and have it stay on and in the skin. And so that's hyaluronic acid. That's basically the, the chemical nature of it. And you heard me say the word chemical. Don't be afraid of the word chemical. I have a background in gen chem, organic chem, and biochem, and water is a chemical. So I just want to clear this skin gimmick marketing nonsense out of the way. If you come across skincare that says chemical free and the first ingredient is water, that is mislabeling. That is misrepresentation. And I am so annoyed by this thing called greenwashing. Water is a chemical because we have the oxygen and hydrogen atoms binding to one another. So we have one oxygen atom, and we have two hydrogen atoms that form this bent structure, this bent molecule. And when two atoms come together, they form a structure, and this is actually a chemical. Water is a chemical. What matters is if those chemicals are good for us or not. So I just wanted to clear the air on that so that you don't fall prey to a lot of these different skin and marketing gimmicks that are just everywhere right now. So the whole thing about chemical-free stuff as you know, being better for you. It's total nonsense. Uh, also natural, anything that comes from planet earth is considered natural. So petroleum or a gas product, gasoline, that's also natural, but it's not good for you, is it? So what matters is are these chemicals good for us or not? And a little behind the scenes here, I'm actually writing a 3000 word medical journal article on nutrition for the skin. 
And I will be doing a masterclass on that. It's going to be published in a UK medical journal. And I found out a lot of things in regards to anti-nutrient foods, foods that actually deplete our nutrients like zinc, selenium, calcium, iron, manganese, magnesium. These foods that are considered anti-nutrient foods do exist. And it actually can be even potentially related to agricultural practices, the way that crops are raised and made to yield more crops and the way that our livestock are raised to make them fatter and grow faster. They are actually making their way into our foods and making a lot of foods more anti-nutrients. So in this paper, I'm going to be actually talking about the best nutritional approach for the skin. So just a little behind the scenes update. You're going to want to uh, join that. That's going to be super fun. Great to see you, Pamela. Hi, Pamela. Looking beautiful. For hyaluronic acid, let's get into it, shall we? So we're going to be breaking down three things how we can consume hyaluronic acid to hydrate our bodies as we age, especially in perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, we lose hydration in a big way, whether that's our skin, whether that's our vaginal tract, we experience more dryness. And what can we do about it to stay more lubricated and youthful and hydrated? And also for our brain, how can we stay hydrated so that our brains function properly, so that we don't have headaches, we don't have brain fog, and we have this beautiful energy and vitality and our skin shines. So we're going to be talking about how we can get more hydration internally with hyaluronic acid products or even an adaptogen that works even better than hyaluronic acid for internal cellular hydration. We're also going to talk about hyaluronic acid in skincare, okay? So we're going to talk about how can we boost our hydration internally? How can we boost our hydration topically? And then we're also going to be, of course, talking about hyaluronic acid in dermal fillers. And some of you may or may not know that I actually teach a lot of other doctors and nurses on rejuvenation practices. I teach them. Uh, internationally, I have been a trainer for other doctors and nurses for many years. And it's a passion of mine to teach you here, uh, the client, and also to teach the clinician. And I do actually quite a bit of that behind the scenes. So I get a big mix up in what I do, which uh, keeps me young and keeps my mind sharp and fresh. And because of that, I'm also constantly learning about the different products that are on the market for rejuvenation. Let's start off with talking about internal hydration. Then we'll go to topical hyaluronic acid serums and moisturizers. Then we're going to get into rejuvenation. So internally, we want to be staying hydrated. And I am double fisting right now, ladies and gentlemen, with my reverse osmosis structured water boiled in a glass kettle and then uh, organic lemon juice, as well as local honey, and a little bit of sea salt. And I've learned some interesting things actually about sea salt recently, that your salt should actually come from a single source. And actually one of the best ways to remineralize your water, because when you filter it with reverse osmosis, it gets rid of things like chlorine and other things that you don't want in your body but it also removes minerals. So actually putting a little bit of sea salt, the real salt brand is that the one I'm using, it comes from Utah. So there actually used to be an ocean over Utah and there's a really good salt mine in Utah. So when you're looking at Celtic salt, Himalayan salt, sea salt, actually a single source salt is the best way to get access to a salt that isn't tainted with other heavy metals and pollutants and all of that. So I like to start my day off with something that's also citric acid, just a little bonus tip here, going to reduce things like your body's negative effect from oxalates. And in my paper, I'm talking about lectins, I'm talking about oxalates, I'm talking about phytic acid that pull nutrients from our body. So hydrating my body, but I'm also reducing oxalic acid impacts from different things I might eat during the, the day. I'm getting a little bit of honey there for my throat and then salt for remineralization. Then the other thing I'm drinking for hydration is my coffee that I did in a glass French press with metal. 
you know, so none of this plastic coffee maker nonsense. And in my coffee, I actually put a scoop of the Paleo Valley chocolate protein powder and a scoop of the Organifi collagen. Uh, Carrie says specific type of honey. It's actually a local honey. It's, um, I'm not a honey expert, but what I do know about honey is that it's a good idea to eat local honey to support your immune system. So my coffee isn't just giving me a little extra kick and pizzazz. I'm getting 20 grams of protein in my coffee and I'm getting collagen. So what this is called is stacking. Uh, and in the biohacking world, if you can stack lots of really great things in your lifestyle, that's going to set you up for success. So staying hydrated is really key. Because we're talking about hyaluronic acid, the focus is on skin hydration. So I always drink those two liquids when I first wake up. And then also I have lots of water on my nightstand as well. Reverse osmosis and structured water. So I kick things off with staying very hydrated. And I probably drink about four liters of water a day. Let me know if you are drinking that much water in a day because our bodies need to be hydrated. And if we're drinking the wrong water and our body's not absorbing that water, then you are not going to have much energy at all. And your skin will continue to feel dry and not very good. So the other thing that I'll drink is actually from the Organifi brand. And if you go to my website, theschoolofradiance.com, there's my biohacking page. And Organifi is number one. There's a reason why it's number one. Because when you're consuming their products, you're getting superfoods and adaptogens. Superfoods are giving your body the cofactors that it needs to operate the cellular machinery. And adaptogens help your body overcome stress. Really good sign to be consuming adaptogens all the time. And our adrenals sit right on top of our kidneys. And when we experience stress in our life, stress is a sign of being alive, ladies and gentlemen. When we experience a stressful state, it taxes our adrenals. And in modern times, we're getting a lot of exposure to different stressors all the time. Not to mention my other work in areas of study on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging. My last research article was on that really deep dive into uh, why this is important because deaths of unknown cause from autoimmune conditions doubled in Canada in 2019 and then has doubled again in 2022. I'm going to repeat that. This is why living healthily is so important, not just for your energy and vitality and to be there for you and your family, but to not get sick and have chronic autoimmune things or have nutrient deficiencies, okay? And hydration is something that a lot of us are constantly dealing with. And if we're lacking in an area, what happens is the body's going to compensate in some way or another. It's going to pull those nutrients. It's going to pull that hydration and water from somewhere else. And then downstream, there's going to be issues. So with the Organifi product, especially the Glow product, there's actually an adaptogen in there called Tremella Mushroom. Adaptogens are things that help the body manage stress. And adaptogens are also often found in things like mushrooms. We're not talking the psychedelic kind. We are talking the adaptogenic kind, the type that allows your body to manage stress. And we don't want to downplay getting enough water. We don't want to downplay getting enough nutrients. We don't want to downplay getting enough superfoods. We definitely don't want to downplay getting enough adaptogens. So the tremella mushroom is really interesting for hydrating the body because it's actually a thousand times more hydrating to the body than the hyaluronic acid molecule. Tremella mushroom is a thousand times more hydrating for the body than consuming hyaluronic acid. So if you're thinking, oh, I've heard about this hyaluronic acid stuff, but there's this skin supplement out there. I'm going to, you know, buy it and get my body hydrated with this hyaluronic acid gummy or some nonsense like that. Those things are everywhere. There's all these skin gimmicks and they claim to have this and that. And you look at the ingredients and there's five hero ingredients like vitamin C, E, hyaluronic acid, retinol, and peptides. But what else is in it? 
And also, what is the final formulation actually doing for the body? So that's why I love that Glow product with the Tremella mushroom to keep the body hydrated. So if you're looking for a way to boost your cellular hydration inside your body, drink enough water and add the Organifi Glow product to your daily routine. And uh, Carrie has a question. Hmm, I think I've heard of mushroom coffee. Yeah, there's some coffee alternatives on the market that are actually uh, mushroom based as well. I personally don't like them. I think uh, the one you're probably referring to is mud water. I personally don't um, think that product tastes very good, <laughs> but it's going to be, it's great for you because it has lots of mushrooms in it. I care about how things feel, how things taste and price point and what's in it. So I'm going to give it to you straight. You know, I will nothing against, you know, that company. It's just a product that if I don't talk about it, there's usually a reason why <coughs> you'll have to excuse my voice. I had a ear infection last week that went into my tonsils a little bit. I kid you not. I hadn't had an ear infection in over 10 years and I haven't had a cold since February, 2019. Seriously. So when we are going through times in our life where, you know, we pick up a bug or something like that, we want to make sure that our body can overcome that. And through staying hydrated, that's also really helpful as well. And you've probably heard the saying of, you know, starve a cold, feed a flu or something like that. Actually, that could be the opposite stimulating autophagy when your body is going through a stressful state or getting over some type of bug. Actually, fasting is an approach that can be helpful to just get that autophagy happening in your body. All right. So enough about nerding out on other things. Keep the questions coming because they're really great. I really hope my voice holds up for this because this is a really exciting topic to talk about. So next up, we're going to talk about topical hyaluronic acid agents. We talked about internally. It's not about eating hyaluronic acid. It's not just about drinking enough water. It's actually consuming nutrients like tremella mushroom in the Organifi Glow product. Go to my biohacking page to get it and promo code Varga will get you 20% off. Really delicious product. Tastes, tastes like pink lemonade. You're going to love it. Your kids will love it too, actually. Topically applying hyaluronic acid is also a really smart move. NECA says, what's the code again? It is Varga. And I'll actually just put it in the chat here. Everything that I'm going to kind of mention is on my main website at theschoolofradiance.com. And you can go directly to the biohacking page where you're going to find the Organifi product. A lot of times my promo codes for different things are Rachel or Varga. Uh, it just depends on what the company decides to give us as the promo code and the biohacking page will take you to Organifi. And I'll put that direct link here. That is uh, organifi.com forward slash Varga and use promo code Varga to save 20%. Really great company making excellent products as well. I'm super picky about the products and the companies that I highlight. One of the reasons I have enjoyed going to so many different conferences over the years is I get to meet the people. I get to meet the people, the CEOs and founders behind these companies. And I have learned a lot behind the scenes of being in this biohacking world since, oh gosh, I'd say 2014, 2015 and interviewing, you know, most of the founders of a lot of these companies that make air purifiers, water purifiers, blue light blocking glasses, LED panels, EMF protective gear, energy coherent technologies and the different supplements. And, uh, there are some bad apples. So I just don't talk about those, those companies. I don't want to give them any credit because, uh, I don't think they're great people. So the ones that I do highlight are people I really like and, um, are more nerdy than I am, especially the team from Neurohacker Collective and Qualia, which I'm going to do another episode on the importance of, I mentioned autophagy for fasting, but I'm going to be doing a whole separate episode on why NAD and analytics are really important for us and why I take them all the time. What I also take all the time is applying hyaluronic acid onto my skin. And if you're curious about how to actually apply a serum, 
how to first wash the face, put your eye cream on, your antioxidant serum, your moisturizer, your sunscreen scrub. You're definitely going to want to join my skincare tutorials. And I'll put the link for the tutorial that's happening right now. And today is actually the last day of early bird pricing. So definitely take advantage of that. So that is for my, in the chat, theschoolofradiance.com. You'll see the tutorial that's happening now. Put the link in the chat. See there, I actually just taught a lesson right before this and it really fun. That's where I show you how to use your products. So not all hyaluronic acid serums and moisturizers are made equally. They're not all made equally. Sure, they can have similar ingredients, but actually what is the chemistry, what's the research and development behind that to actually make that final formulation? So a lot of times when I'll see a product that is advertised with hyaluronic acid and antioxidants and peptides and all these things, sure, those ingredients can sound great, but what are the other ingredients in it as well that are giving the product the feeling of slip? or glide on the skin? How much of the product do you need to use? Does the product actually work? How, what's the cost of it? So that's why on my skin shop, I really do my best. I sell over 200 products on my skin shop of what the best hyaluronic acid serums are and moisturizers in one easy place. If you are needing that more customized guidance, you want me to streamline a skincare routine and rejuvenation plan for you and give you that ongoing support, that's what my one-on-one -on -one sessions entail. And lots of lovely people here are one-on-one -on -one clients of mine. Hey, Yuko, great to have you here. Tamara, Susan, Sharon, Pamela, Carrie, Jennifer, I've worked with so many of you over the years to provide that direction. There you go for that specific uh, recommendation of what skin products are going to help you address your needs. So especially getting back to the skin hydration need and especially this time of year, it's really great to actually add an antioxidant serum into the mix. Cleanse the skin, apply your eye cream, then add your antioxidant serum, then your moisturizer, then your sunscreen and then your makeup. And I actually just taught a tutorial on this uh, right before this. Pamela says, one-on-one -on -one chats are amazing. Thank you, Pamela. It's been wonderful to support you. Sharon says, hey, wonderful, Rachel. Great to see you. Although you should know, I don't actually love those words, amazing and wonderful. A little bit of tough love here. Um, amazing, why do we want to be caught in a maze about something, right? And wonderful, why do we want to be wondering about something all the time? So actually higher frequency words are going to be like incredible or fantastic or fabulous or lovely. So just a little bit of a linguistics wordplay there. If I pay attention to the stuff so that I'm actually a better speaker and educator and can more effectively communicate. Uh, so I love studying linguistics and the incredible thing is that some words are actually meant to uh, sort of keep us confused <laughs> in this whole world on skin and beauty can absolutely become confusing. Yuko, oh, nice positive vibe, frequency speak. Amen, sister, that's why you're here. Jennifer, you look amazing, Rachel. I hope you're not, you know, stuck in a maze by how fantastic my skin and makeup looks and, and hair. Uh, this is heatless hair curls, by the way. I teach all this stuff in my tutorials. How to do it. So literally, you can wake up with hair that's fabulous. Thanks, Jennifer. You're so sweet. All right. So what does a hyaluronic acid or what does rather an antioxidant serum do? Two things. Antioxidant serums can boost your skin's hydration, but can also boost the nutrients that your skin is exposed to. So it's primarily doing two things. And then depending on what you want to focus on with your skin, we can actually ensure you're using a serum that say has also vitamin C in it, that has peptides in it, that has hyaluronic acid, or an antioxidant serum that's going to help you overcome things like acne and breakouts or to brighten the skin or to hydrate the skin. There's a lot of really cool things that we can actually do by tweaking the antioxidant serum that we're using, depending on what our specific skin needs are. I love hyaluronic acid in products as well as the copper peptide serums that I love to recommend alongside dermal rolling 
is fantastic because the copper peptide serum, copper peptide is great for the body. It helps to reduce pigmentation. It's also a copper peptide is a great cofactor for cellular metabolism and skin cell health. Hello. And I know that copper peptides been getting a little bit more popular in some of these patch patches or other things. I'm going to talk about that stuff when I feel like there's enough clinical evidence to do so. That's why you're here. You know, I don't talk about fluff. I want to make sure that things that I talk about have proper double blind placebo randomized control studies. Okay. I'm not just going to be talking about a product that they looked at eight people and that's it. <laughs> and that is what I've seen with uh, some of the uh, copper peptide stuff. So just an FYI, if I like something, it's going to be on my biohacking page and I'll recommend it for you. Okay. Antioxidant serums are a great strategy to get more hyaluronic acid onto your skin. When you have hyaluronic acid on your skin, it's going to be pulling water from the environment so that it stays on your skin. Also, there are a number of different moisturizers that I work with on my skin shop that also have hyaluronic acid mixed with peptides and different humectants and other antioxidants. Do you need to use an antioxidant serum or do you just need to use a moisturizer? Well, it depends. It depends on your skin hydration levels. And a lot of times clients that I've worked with since 2011 that really struggle with things like dry skin and rough skin, more often than not, they're not cleansing twice a day and they're not exfoliating at all because somebody on YouTube told them to only wash their face once a day, splash their face with water in the AM and to never exfoliate. That is the worst advice that you could hear. Some of the free advice that you get online, it, it, like it sounds pretty good and you might be <laughs> inclined to listen to it. Some online advice is good, uh, but I, oftentimes when it comes to the skin stuff, you do want to be really careful who you're getting your skin and beauty advice from. When I see other influencers or other biohackers or other health experts that their niche isn't skin, they often are actually giving some not so good advice and also poor technique. I just seen this over and over and over again. So if you're wanting to learn about hormones, get that information from a hormone expert. And if you're wanting to learn about skin, get that information from a skin expert. That's why you're here. Not just from someone who's like talking about a lot of broad stuff and and telling you things that they picked up on a YouTube video or they picked up on a podcast. What's the data? What's the clinical evidence? The clinical evidence tells us that hyaluronic acid in skincare absolutely hydrates the skin. Now, there's an interesting nuance with topical hyaluronic acid. The hyaluronic acid molecule can actually come in different sizes. Some of them are really big sized molecules. Some of them are a little smaller. Some hyaluronic acid molecules are a little, are even smaller. And if a hyaluronic acid molecule is too big in a moisturizer or in a serum, it's actually not going to enter the cell and create that cellular hydration. So what it comes down to is actually working with a product that's been properly made. Research and development has been done. There's been a clinical evidence on the efficacy of the final formulation of that product not just looking for a product that, and that gives results, not just looking for a product with the ingredient of hyaluronic acid, because now you know that there's different sizes and different molecular weights of different forms of hyaluronic acid. So you want a small enough one that's actually going to be doing the job and hydrating the cells. So I really wanted to clear that up because not enough people know that, that you can actually buy hyaluronic acid at different weights and it has to be a specific size to actually do its job. And it's not just about using a hyaluronic acid serum, working with a serum or a moisturizer that again has the other things in it too, like peptides and antioxidants and also hyaluronic acid is really good. So it's about getting kind of like multiple things in one thing, uh, which I'm a really big fan of, kind of like not having to use makeup wipes or a makeup remover or micellular water or a toner. 
just get one cleanser that does the job. And I have that cleanser on my skin shop as well. Next up, I'd love to talk about hyaluronic acid in rejuvenation. Dermal fillers are comprised of hyaluronic acid. And this is actually grown in a lab from a bacteria. Now, back in the day, hyaluronic acid used to come from a bovine or a cow source. And if we look at different people in the media that their faces are just totally messed up, lumpy, just looks really weird. These were the previous generation of, of collagen fillers and hyaluronic acid fillers. And so what happened with those types of fillers that were collagen based that were coming from cows is people are actually having uh, sensitivities to them. So that really fell out of popularity. Again, this is why I have what's called a seven to eight year rule. I don't go near something that has not been on the market for seven to eight years. I've been in this rejuvenation game since 2011. It's a game. It's a marketing game. You want to look at the long-term outcomes, the long-term safety profile. And when one thing comes on the market, sure, it can be FDA approved to do this, that, and the other thing uh, for a specific application, which is great. However, what does that really look like in real life? And oftentimes with things like body contouring technology. Um, cool sculpting was really popular a really long time ago. It still is today. And the first generation of cool sculpting is actually really painful. Uh, you could get nodules. It took forever. And then they came out with a second generation. It was more comfortable. It gave a smoother result and it took way less time. So this is an example of when something hits the market, especially in the rejuvenation space, the product itself and the protocols on how it's applied takes time to get dialed in. It takes time. And we actually even saw this with Botox. Botox first came on the market in the 1990s. It's been used forever. And now there's other forms of botulinum toxin, also known as a neurotoxin, also known as a neuromodulator. There's other brands on the market too, including now Dysport, Nuceva, Juvo, and Zeoman, and they all have different nuances to their chemical structure. And in my research, I actually talk about the fact that some are, are uh, cleaner than others. And uh, I, I like clean. I like as clean as possible. So if you're curious what my top recommendation is in that respect, um, book a one-on-one -on -one and I'll let you know. But they're not for everybody. Injectables are not for everybody. I've actually noticed since 2018 that the highly discerning modern medical aesthetics patient or client who's considering rejuvenation is looking at this in more of a skin health angle, which I really like. If you're considering getting better skin, looking and feeling your best, look at it from a health angle, not just from the angle of, oh, I want to look like, you know, the other all the other celebrities and all the other people online. And um, because these beauty standards change every couple decades, right? If we look at the beauty standard of uh, 1920s flapper, you know, how did they do their eyebrows? How did they do their hair? How did they do their lipstick, their eye makeup, their outfits? Every decade, we tend to go through a shift in the beauty trends and beauty ideals. So what I think is really good is to not be trendy, but to be timeless. <laughs> I just came up with that. Don't be trendy, be timeless. And skin health is always going to win. Healthy health on the inside is always going to translate to health on the outside. So dermal, dermal fillers that are composed of hyaluronic acid, it's not coming from collagen bovine sources anymore. It's actually coming from a bacteria that's grown in a lab. And hyaluronic acid under the microscope, we get these chains of hyaluronic acid in, we're talking about fillers. We're talking about hyaluronic acid and fillers now. So in fillers, hyaluronic acid comes as this chain. And what can happen is we can actually cut those chains of hyaluronic acid and then we get cross-linking. It's like taking a long spaghetti strand, having those in your plate and then cutting it up with good etiquette, I cover etiquette and all of that in my membership, by the way. And Tamara, you are so ready. I don't know why you're not in there yet. Uh, and then a number of you other lovely ladies, Susan, you're definitely ready for it too. 
Uh, and yeah, the membership is where I cover a lot of uh, etiquette, uh, dining etiquette, communication etiquette. And I go a little bit deeper into some of the other uh, beauty and detoxification practices that I employ that uh, I just don't really want to talk about publicly or some other things that I do that I'm just not comfortable sharing publicly as well uh, for various different reasons. So the membership is really where it's no holds barred. And we just have great conversations on really deep topics to cultivate radiance and lasting beauty. If you have a question about that, um, just send me an email info at the school of radiance.com. So when we're cutting up our spaghetti in our dish, we're, we're creating these shorter chains of hyaluronic acid and why hyaluronic acid is why that's done to those hyaluronic acid chains is the cross-linking actually, if you think about it, it's going to be quicker for you to eat that bowl of pasta one long noodle at a time. It's going to take longer for you to eat that bowl of pasta with one small noodle at a time. So that's why cross-linking is done to the hyaluronic acid molecule so that it lasts longer. So this is called Vicross technology. This is called cross-linking. And you've probably heard about that in some of the dermal filler marketing. The other thing that's in dermal fillers, it's not just hyaluronic acid. So if your practitioner is saying it's just hyaluronic acid, it's not. There's actually other things that are added to make those little strands stick together. And this is called a BDDA molecule. It's a sugar molecule that is then added so that these little tiny strands, it's like this little block that's put inside it so it attaches to this other tiny strand. And then that other block, which is a BDDA molecule, sugar molecule, and then another strand and then another block. So that's actually what gives the hyaluronic acid its structure in fillers. And the other thing with fillers is that some of them have what's called a higher G prime than others. And some of them have a greater lift capacity than others. They retain their shape better than others. So say for example, for cheeks, we're using a product with a higher G prime. We want more lift to the cheek. And in other areas that are dynamic or hyperkinetic, like the eyes and around the mouth and lips, this is actually why these areas age faster on the face. The eyes is the first area of the face to show signs of aging because we have this muscle around our eye that uh, contracts. That's why we can squint. That's why we can smile. That's why we can you know, get these crow's feet. And I have another research paper on eye aging and um, some things to do about that. And I wrote that paper because I actually got really sick and tired of seeing issues after people having tear trough fillers. So I actually took a stand for this and said, enough's enough. I'm tired of people having these issues in this relatively new approach to offering fillers around the eyes. I was seeing puffiness. I was seeing migration. I was seeing this blue tinge called the Tyndall effect. So I wrote a paper on an alternative to tear trough papers, to tear trough fillers. And that's actually kind of what put me on the map. I took a stand for something all about safety. I'm all about powerful rejuvenation outcomes. So I actually wrote a paper and teach this algorithm uh, still to this day. I think I wrote that paper. I started writing it in 2017, 2018. I think it's published in 2019. And uh, that was a fun one. So Hyaluronic acid fillers, if they are applied inappropriately, we can experience things like getting too much hydration in an area. So the skin in the under eye area is very delicate. It's as thin as an eggshell. And if too much filler is applied here, you'll actually get more puffiness. So if you get sick or if your lymphatic system is stressed or lymphatic system drainage is blocked in the face, which hyaluronic acid fillers can do. This is very well known uh, in practice and in the literature now that hyaluronic acid fillers can actually interfere with the lymphatic drainage of the face. That's why people get this puffy face. Or if you think of, say, someone like Demi Moore, she walked the red carpet and her face just looked bonkers. She looked like a completely different person. Let me know if you remember that. And this is a prime example of someone who, very beautiful, but I think what happened is she got on a plane, went to altitude, and then landed, maybe got sick or something, 
and then her face just like really puffed up. And we have actually seen this. Um, I've actually even seen this clinically. Uh, someone I did some rejuvenation for, they got on a plane. I think they're going to Ireland. And then, you know, their lips are extra puffy. And so that's why if you're thinking about these different cosmetic procedures like dermal fillers, there's some nuances to know, right? And that's what I love to research is how can we provide education so we, you know, get the best outcomes possible. So Emily says, yes, I did. Yuko, is that Madonna too? Oh gosh, don't even get me started on Madonna. Some of these, some of these celebrities have you know, some really interesting vibes to them. And personally, I don't watch things like the Oscars or the Grammys. I just might see the occasional picture of a celebrity pop up on my social media feed. Oh, okay. They look a little different now. What'd they do? So yes, yeah, so when people first get work done, plastic surgery, facelift, fillers, sure, they can be there can be some healing and recovery, but also with flying and going to altitude or uh, coming down with something and getting sick, sometimes the fillers can uh, tend to puff up. The other interesting thing here is that different fillers have different hydrophilic properties. And this is also an interesting nuance here too. So not all fillers are the same. Actually, when I teach practitioners on hyaluronic acid, uh, we're looking at the chemical structure. We're actually looking at how well that hyaluronic acid filler uh, based on histology reports actually integrates into the tissue. Some hyaluronic acid fillers are a little bit more kind of like granular or lumpy and others integrate like pretty okay. And then others just integrate beautifully. So there are different brands of fillers out there. And then within each brand, there's different types of filler that have that different lift capacity, that G prime. Yeah, a little technical here, but those uh, fellow practitioners here listening, I'm sure are appreciating this. And if you are a practitioner, I'd love to hear from you. There's lots of ways that um, I'm happy to support you. I take the approach of a rising tide lifts all boats and love to see fellow medical aesthetics practitioners thrive in what they do as well. So if you are a practitioner, I'd love to hear from you. I do offer rejuvenation training and um, other things too. So send me a direct email, please. Info at theschoolofradiance.com. And I'd love to support you in your career. And also, if you're thinking about getting into the industry, what do you need to know? <coughs> some hyaluronic acid fillers have some nicknames. Because they actually don't integrate into the tissue as well or they actually grab too much water. And then you get too much swelling and too much puffiness. So getting back to this G prime situation. So we use basically a thicker, essentially type of filler in the cheeks to provide more lift. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening or if you're watching, put your finger under your cheek, right under your zygomatic bone, your cheekbone, and then go up and back. Look at what that does to my face, right? When we go up and back. So what this is mimicking is actually some of the fat that was once in my mid cheek called the malar fat pad. And what happens when we lose fat in our faces and we lose actually bone as well, especially perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, we're losing, we're losing bone, right? Because also there's a lot of foods we're consuming that are anti-nutrients and are actually depleting our calcium. And learn so much in this paper that I'm writing. So actually, when fillers applied into the cheek, you can get this lift capacity where the cheek is lifted, and then it actually helps to reduce things like nasolabial folds, smile lines, corners of the mouth, we call those perioral lines, and then also a little bit to the uh, marionette zone, which we call uh, the dowels, right? Those marionette lines that come down from the corners of the mouth to the chin. And fillers actually are like inflating an air mattress in the face. You don't always know exactly how much air it's going to take to fill up that mattress, <laughs> but eventually you'll get to a point where it's uh, where you want it to be. So doing things like hyaluronic acid fillers is very much half art, half science. A little tip here, always take a look at your practitioner. If they look freaky deaky, if 
they look a little bit terrifying, then perhaps don't go to that individual. When I started in the industry, I started going to uh, different aesthetics and plastic surgery conferences, and I looked around the room. And I promised myself I would never end up looking overdone. I would always stay a little bit underdone. And what happens for people in my position in the industry is we can actually lose sight of what the ideal facial ratios are. What those ideal facial ratios are, are actually what makes people look attractive. So if we think about Angelina Jolie, if we think about Brad Pitt, if we think about Johnny Depp, these individuals actually have pretty symmetric faces. And the reason they're attractive is because their facial features are in certain ratios. And so people in the industry, because you know we get access to anything and everything at any time, can actually lose sight of what those ideal ratios or are. And when you see people who are really overdone, you know, the individual whose lips enter the Starbucks line before they do, they likely went to a practitioner that didn't maintain the ideal facial ratios in their rejuvenation. I see that a lot. So when you're seeing someone and you can't help but notice that they've had their lips done or just something looks a little bit off about them, that's actually noted when rejuvenation is done in a way where the ideal facial ratios are not respected. It's not about us looking to achieve this perfectly formed ideal facial ratio face. Okay. Leonardo da Vinci studied this stuff. And, um, so there's, there's lots of different, the golden ratio, the phi ratio, and that's what basically medical aesthetics and plastic surgery is based on to help people become as attractive as possible. But it isn't not, it's not about looking perfect because we all have different nuances to our faces. So when I put my face up against that ideal facial ratio face map, you know, my face wasn't perfect, but yeah, I'm half, half decent looking. I'd like to consider myself uh, beautiful. And, uh, but, but my eyes were too close together. So I was like, okay, well, what the heck am I going to do about that? Well, I can't do anything about that. You can't, you know, do rejuvenation to spread my eyes farther apart, but you can do some cool makeup tips for that. So it isn't about making our faces look like the ideal facial ratio. It's about working with what you got. And in the face, there's no two sides that are the same. Actually, if you were to see someone and their face looked perfectly symmetric between one side or another, they would actually look really strange to you. And it would kind of look like, you're like, what the heck is wrong with this person? Like, why do they look so strange? And it's because their faces are actually a little like too perfect. And you're like, you're kind of mesmerized by it because the face, the eyes actually love to see little, little bits of character. And one side is going to be smaller or bigger than the other side. It's just a fact, you know, we're, we're made beautifully uh, and we're all made uniquely. And actually those little subtle nuances with one side being smaller or larger than the other is actually what gives our face character. But with rejuvenation, we can provide balance. We can actually restore lost volume. And that's what hyaluronic acid fillers do. And when they're done really well, we can actually get a lift to the cheek to help to tighten the jawline. We can do a little bit of filler into the lips to give a hydrated look, not, you know, the duck lip look, which uh, doesn't look good on anybody. And also uh, sometimes a little bit into the marionette zone along the jawline to basically restore some of the lost fat and bone that was once there. When it's done really well, you can't even tell it's been done. That's the whole point. If you can tell something's been done, then that means that that person's individual, really cool, nuanced character to their face has been disrupted and you can tell something's off. So one of the key things that happens when people start to look overdone, when they have too much filler in their lips is oftentimes their, their lips were just done, right? So everyone has these, you know, natural ratios to their own face. That's what gives their faces character. So if you actually get filler in one area, say just the lips. So we, we get this situation where the lips can become um, accentuated, right? But 
there becomes this kind of disharmony with, with your own naturally God-given ratios. So actually what can give a more natural look is doing a little bit to the cheeks, a little bit to the lips, a little bit to the jawline so that everything is proportionally enhanced. You might be thinking, oh, that sounds like a lot, but actually that's what's going to give a more natural look as opposed to just doing one area where then someone's um, natural facial feature ratio is then disturbed. So there's a lot that goes into facial measurements and assessments. I can pretty much look at somebody's face really quickly and see if they have a symmetric balanced face or not. And in fact, this is going to sound really funny, but the highest compliment the highest compliment I can give someone is, wow, you have a very, uh, very symmetric face. Very beautiful. I know that sounds hilarious probably, but the way that I look at a face is looking at ratios and proportions. But then the, there's the other layer is looking at the health and vitality. Someone can have, um, you know, filled cheeks, lips, and jawline and sure their facial ratios look good, but what does their skin quality look like? What do their teeth look like? What do their eyes look like? Do they have a sparkle to their eyes? Do they have radiance? And I'll see this all the time. People who look pretty good on social media, you know, their faces are all done up with lots of different things, great makeup, great body composition. But I see them in real life. And like these people look fantastic, like model ask online. And then I see them in real life and they open their mouths and they start to talk and they start to use gestures. And I just said, wow, I don't want to be anywhere near this person anymore. <laughs> I know that can sound kind of judgy, but this is just to give you an example of people can look a certain way, but it's their energy. It's the way that they present that I would say trumps anything and everything actually. And the reason that I love to take the skin health approach as opposed to, oh, you know, get a little filler in your cheeks, lips, marinette zone. It's not just that. It's about caring for the internal environment. A well hydrated, low inflamed individual who is operating at a higher frequency, who is filling their body with nutrients and adaptogens and good thoughts and good vibes, they are going to look so much more beautiful in my eyes than someone who has had all the plastic surgery in the world. Very interesting. And I started to actually ob observe this in my career. So I started offering rejuvenation in 2011. And then 2013, 2014, I started to notice these really beautiful patients I was working with. And they were aged 60 to 90. And they had sun damage, but they had a great body composition. They were a pleasure to have in my chair and spend time with. And I started to ask them about their lifestyle. How do they live? Because they looked so different. They, to me, looked so much more beautiful. What is that? These individuals also responded very quickly to rejuvenation and had the best transformations with me and barely actually needed anything. What is it about these individuals? So I started to study them. I started to, you know, take notes, body, mind, spirit, energy practices, hobbies, definitely spiritual practices, great family life, peaceful lifestyle, balanced, regulated nervous system. And they were a pleasure to be in conversation with. I just loved being around them. And they didn't look traditionally beautiful to modern day beauty trend standards, but they just had this essence to them. And then this is basically what I started to then employ in my life. And then it kind of hit me when I came across an Ayurvedic text last, last year, actually talking about radiance. Radiance is the electromagnetic projection of all of your other body systems operating in a specific way. So radiance in Ayurveda is the 10th body. Body, mind, spirit, energy are our first four bodies. There's other things in the mix as well. So if you're looking for deep lasting beauty, it's not going to be in hyaluronic acid. It's not going to be in consuming hyaluronic acid products. It's not going to be in using hyaluronic acid serum. It's not going to be in getting hyaluronic acid dermal fillers, injectables. Sure. Those can be pieces if something's bothering you and you want to do something about it, but it's not just that. So say you don't have money for rejuvenation, live a healthy life, live a peaceful life, 
learn to regulate your nervous system and set your life up for success, full of love and peace. This will translate into actually looking and being more beautiful. And then adding to those layers, reducing oxidative stress so that your eyes are bright. Your eyes aren't puffy and dark and red, especially in the spring season when all the pollen starts to come out. You can handle stress when it occurs in your life, whether it's through pollen, whether it's through eating nutrient deficient foods, whether it's through exposure and toxins in your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, whether it's you know having too much yeast and fungi and pesticides and heavy metals and parasites in your body. It isn't just about skincare and rejuvenation for beauty. It's so much deeper than that. And that's why you're here because you know, I love to nerd out on these different layers and really what can happen? What's the magic of what can happen when we start to take the time and learn all of these things? And that I know for a fact is what makes me unique because I don't just talk about skincare. I just don't just talk about plastic surgery. I talk about all the lifestyle modifications that we can make. And this is so important now more than ever. In my research, when I wrote my oxidative stress status paper, uh, Stats Canada actually published federal data that in 2019, deaths of unknown cause from autoimmune conditions doubled. So before 2019, for five years prior to that, it was at about 4,000 deaths a year. Then it jumped to 8,000. And in 2022, it jumped to 18,000. If we want to look good, if we want to slow our cellular aging and be our most positive, high vibe, radiant, beautiful versions for not just now, but for many years to come, it really does come down to your lifestyle, keeping your oxidative stress status lowered maintaining a peaceful life, having, you know, getting right with God, getting right with your family, getting great relationships, being your best version possible, being a light in the world. Those are all things that when we are exposed to different toxins in our environment or our foods, or even emotionally, energetically, and spiritually, we can overcome those things because our body, mind, spirit, and energy can manage it because we are resilient. Radiance isn't just something you can pay somebody to, for to show up for a radiance transformation, right? In one appointment, getting this, 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 them. No, you have to learn these things. You have to become your own expert. And the more people that know about these things and know that, well, really actually to get great skin. Oh, okay. I guess I do have to, you know, look at superfoods, adaptogens, and these different cofactors because our food is less nutrient dense. It's actually got anti-nutrients in it from soil degradation quality. Seriously, like cacao, lots of great benefits, but when the tree is in bad soil, the oxalates actually come up into the soil from agricultural practices and taint the cacao. That's why I'm drinking my hot water and lemon to help cut oxalates in my diet that I might get exposed to. There's so many little nuances and tweaks here that can just make such a massive difference over time. My body composition is on point. My mental capacity is on point. I get over colds and things like that very quickly. If I get a breakout, it's gone fast. My hair is thicker than ever. My nails are thicker than ever. The amount of energy I have to do things is pretty remarkable. But I also know when to slow down. And especially for you women who are listening, uh, this is just a little, little uh, key thing for you all to know here. Susan, thank you as always, Rachel. I need to run to another meeting. It's so great to see you. Susan, I've loved working with you for many years here. And Jody, this is why people follow you, Rachel. And no freaky deaky. <laughs> You know, I, I don't think I look freaky. Uh, just natural looking beauty, just radiant, natural, radiant beauty. Thank you so much. And it's really important that when you are considering learning from someone that they are walking the walk and talking the talk. And if they're not, you know how you can tell? Their eyes. There are specific speakers in the health and wellness space that when I connect with, oh, they're beautiful. Is that an eagle? Oh, wow. <laughs> no, we do. There's an eagle on my window there. It's so majestic. Look at people's eyes when they're speaking. Listen to their voice. 
what type of energy are they giving off? Because we can get really dragged down into trying to learn about this, that, and the other thing, but it can be done in a way that will actually end up stressing you out further and keeping you in what's called a high beta state. We don't want that. We want to be in a peaceful, restful state. This is really important, especially as women, to maintain this state because this is a very beautiful feminine state. So, of course, I talk a lot about the different strategies uh, that I mentioned that lead to deeper, lasting beauty, more so in my membership. And so I'd just love to open it up to any questions that any of you might have here on the topic of hyaluronic acid and consuming it, staying hydrated for our cells, and also in antioxidant serums and also in rejuvenation. If something's been bothering you for a while, say skin redness or skin irritation, and uh, eagles having a great time out there, skin irritation or acne or psoriasis or eczema, rosacea or skin laxity, fine lines, wrinkles, pigmentation, let me know. I would love to connect with you. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me over at the School of Radiance.com. Check out the show notes for this episode for those of you catching the replay. Uh, there is, uh, for those of you who are here, there is a uh, special bonus for you all joining me here today. Use that link. Uh, let's have a 15 minute meet and greet, and I'll give you some specific guidance on how to get started on your skin beauty, lasting beauty, uh, vitality, and radiance journey. Okay. You got, I know, yeah, you, you actually make a lot of your products. So I'll talk to you offline about some uh, topical HA options and Jennifer. Wow. Lots of wisdom besides skincare. Thank you. My pleasure. I get you on the skin stuff. I, I, I generally attract people and I kind of do this on purpose. I have to be very clear with what I offer. I offer healthy skin, great skin through skincare and rejuvenation. That's my storefront. And then behind the scenes, when you come inside, yeah, you're going to learn that there's lots of other layers to slowing aging, to improving your sleep, improving vitality, improving your body composition, balancing your hormones. All of those things are going to make you look more beautiful, even if you don't invest in anything in the clinic and rejuvenation. But if there's something that's bothering you and you want to do something about it, then it's wise to learn about the different options that are available. And that's what I do is I provide that education, what to do, where to go, as well as that ongoing support too. Okay. We have a question from Rochelle here. Keep the questions coming. Miss, I'm opening it up for some questions here. And just wondering how you feel about a certain product's name. Uh, there's a brand name. I'm not going to mention it. I don't know anything about this product line. Um, are they good? I did purchase a wand for my skin. Well, the fact that I actually haven't heard about it. <laughs> Pretty much your answer. I don't think I've worked with a single uh, client of mine that's used that specific product brand that you're talking about. So a lot of times with different products that you find online, there's going to be a lot of marketing and really good products actually don't have a ton of media and marketing. They invest in product development and research and development and education. And what I found, especially is I see this all the time after the holidays that uh, individuals do skin hauls and they're like, Oh my gosh, I got this product at like 40% off um, black Friday sale. I can't do a sale like that on the skincare that I offer. If I did that, I literally wouldn't make any money on it. So when I hear about people purchasing these products at these like blowout sales, it tells me that that product was overpriced to begin with because they have such a massive margin that they can actually do sales um, to that capacity. However, what I will say is I do have a Radiant Rewards program on my skin shop now, uh, which can actually allow you to save 10% on your ongoing orders. And so the radio reward system, it tracks how much you've spent and then actually will give you uh, radiant rewards points on your orders. So that's brand new on the always radiant skin shop. Super fun, super happy to 
mention that. And the thing about skin wands, you know, I love a little magic sometimes. So the thing about skin wands is, do you need a gua sha tool? Do you need a wand? No, you do not need a magical skin wand for your face. What, like, what do you expect that to do? Do they have any clinicals? What do they claim? Your fingers are going to be your best friend for improving facial lymphatic drainage, for smoothing your fascia, for smoothing your facial musculature and reducing puffiness. I actually teach how to do just that in lesson one of my skincare tutorials. So Rochelle, learn how to do your own facial lymphatic drainage yourself with your fingers. Why I love to actually encourage using your fingers instead of a tool is I have a piece of technology actually right here. It's called the BioWell. So get this. Such a nerd. So this is a piece of technology that a lot of Europeans use. And I love it. Side of it's a little flower life symbol. That's cool. So basically what you do, this box, you plug it in. It's got a program, all sorts of fancy stuff. And inside here, there's actually Kirlion plate that it, you've probably seen these like um, high contrast images of a coin on a plate with light coming off of it, off the edges. Now, clearly on photography, it's, it's been researched for decades. But what's cool is Emily says, love the first lesson. It's one of my favorites. Thank you so much um, uh, for being a part of my skincare tutorials. This is, you know, I give it to you straight. These master classes and, you know, the School of Radiance podcast episodes and content and social media content, like it's more of a macro overview. It's, it's not as deep as you need. Um, because I'm not about to cast my pearls before swine sometimes. I'm not saying that you listening are, are that. It's not what I mean. But what I mean is I go deeper. Um, once you invest in working with me, you get so much more in return. It's like the sending and receiving. Do you really think that if you are just consuming free stuff, you're, you're going to be getting the best content? Mm -mm, definitely. You, you got to get some skin in the game. This is a sending and receiving concept. And this is actually a very balanced way to approach life and working with people. So this thing, you put your finger in here and it actually on the Kirlion photography plate measures, get this, <laughs> I'm such a nerd. It actually measures the photons, the packets of light. That's what a photon is. The packets of light coming off your fingertips. <laughs> that's so cool. So when we are actually doing our facial lymphatic drainage and wash ourselves with our fingers, we actually have energy coming off our fingers. So I love this concept. Instead of using some tool or stone, I'd rather you take that time. So every AM and PM, you're doing your skincare, you're doing your lymphatic drainage, all that good stuff. I teach that in less than one of my tutorials. Register now. Love to see you there. You're going to love it. It's going to teach you to be a skin, your own skin pro in seven weeks. We cover basic to advanced lessons, including dermal rolling. So instead of using a magical skin wand, sorry, I can't help myself. Uh, I would more recommend that you employ things like dermal rolling instead. That's actually going to give you research back changes to your skin for collagen, elastin, and pigmentation reduction, and also acne reduction. And uh, dermal rolling is fantastic. You will hear so much mixed information of things like dermal rolling and microneedling online. You're going to hear some practitioners say, oh, you shouldn't do that. It's going to damage your skin. Come see us instead for microneedling with PRP, right? Uh, but also on the flip side, if you're using the wrong roller, if you're using the wrong products, you don't have your skin barrier stabilized. Absolutely. You can actually experience um, not good things on your skin. And I learned about dermal rolling when I started in the industry in 2011. Actually, at the clinic I started at, I took over one of Dr. Lance Setterfield's research assistants. And Dr. Lance Setterfield wrote the Bible on dermal rolling and microneedling. He's from where I'm from. And so straight out of the gate, I was able to see the impacts of dermal rolling, at-home dermal rolling and microneedling on the skin. And it's so cheap. It's so time and cost effective. It's one of the most simple things that you can do to thicken your skin, reduce pigmentation, tighten your pore size, all sorts of good things. Uh, but you do need to know how to do it properly and use the right tool and products alongside it. So I have a whole lesson on that 
in my skincare tutorials. It's the only place I teach those types of tutorials, primarily for liability reasons, because I don't want people to see me do something as a practitioner, like random people online that are just weird. And then using, you know, a roller they found from China and this serum they bought on Amazon and get all sorts of issues because this stuff can happen. And a number of years ago, I was in a conference and there were so many issues with the DIY things, like people doing their own hyaluronic acid dermal fillers with those, you know, high pressure skin pens that were all the rage a number of years ago. Nothing but problems. So we actually pulled all of our treatment videos offline. Anyways, uh, practitioners with, with ethics did. And, and uh, that was a really bold move for us to make. Now, there's lots of practitioners that still show their treatments online. I don't think that's a wise approach because promoting DIY of certain things is not good. But since the 90s, dermal rolling has been utilized at home safely with really beautiful uh, long-term outcomes. All right, Rochelle, thank you for explaining more about this topic. So much confusing info. You made it clear. I hope I made it clear. That's a sign of that I've done a good job as a good teacher. So where's my apple? Oh, apples are one of my superfoods. That's, that's funny enough. I, I love that you all stayed here until the end. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. And... Um, Okay, NECA, I'm trying to book the session on my phone. Cannot get past the communication method. Uh, what I would do then, it could be like a browser thing on your phone. I would just go to, uh, you can actually send me a direct email, info at theschoolofradiance.com. That's my email. And then just head on over. Everything is available at theschoolofradiance.com. And as a freebie for everybody here that's stuck to the end, y'all are keeners, super proud of you. Make sure that you enjoy my skincare checklist. It's completely free. And my free 30-minute training on helping you get the best skin of your life, talking about oxidative stress. That can all be found on my freebies page at theschoolofradiance.com. And, oh, Emily gave me an apple. Love that you are so particular. Oh, I am very particular. Uh, I literally live like really clean lifestyle 90 to 99% of the time. I do. I practice what I preach. Practice what I preach. Actually, I do have a little bit of a preacher in my family line. My great-grandmother was the second female ordained evangelical minister in Canada. So I guess that's why. I'm, uh, I like teaching as well and preaching skin and radiant stuff. Emily says it shows I didn't used to be a good speaker. Um, this was kind of funny to share, but the first time I actually did a presentation, which it was for a job and it was at a bank and I, Oh mom. Oh mother. So anyways, my mom and my sister dressed me for the occasion. I was in this like really weird top and like this really frilly skirt. And my mom thought it would be a really good idea for me to talk about this big problem that I have. It's huge problems. Like every day is just a huge concern, huge thing, huge deal in my life. So she said, you're going to talk about this problem you have in your life, Rachel. Said, okay. Okay. If you say so, mom, it's like, 1615 at the time. And I was presenting this to about 40 other people my age for this job at a bank. It was like some student program. So glad I didn't get it. And so I had to walk up like 30 steps. Now, I think it was more like four flights of stairs. So it was at the top of the Hudson's Bay building, downtown Victoria, and the elevator stops at like a certain spot in the building, a really old building. And then I had to walk another flight of stairs to get to the portable that was on top of the roof of the building. And so I got into the room. I'm in this ridiculous outfit. I have this like cue card talking about this huge problem I have for some reason. It's a good thing to talk about. Oh, thanks, mom. And I get in the room. I'm totally out of breath. And it's just like 40 eyeballs on me. And... So the big problem that I had was having really thick curly hair. 
that was really unruly curly hair. And, you know, when I had re rehearsed this talk, it was going to be something very dramatic. Like, there's this huge problem that I have. Blah, blah, blah. I have to use all these different products for it. It takes time out of my day every single day. And you know, I, I thought it was like the, the humor of it, but I just got dead eyeballs. And I was hyperventilating through the whole thing. And then the other time that I spoke where I hyperventilated full on was in university. Uh, I was in my nursing education. And I over here. I basically did the whole project. It's a group project with six of us. All the slides, all the stuff made it look pretty. And then I, it was time to present to the class with the group. And so I'm on slide one and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I literally hyperventilated. So what you see now is years of learning how to speak and educate and convey using <laughs> communication and words and gestures and energy and tone and cadence and all these different things. But there were a couple times, two times, I full on hyperventilated when I started. So a little bit behind the scenes there, ladies and gentlemen, that I have also had my own uh, fun stories of learning how to speak and present. But I have, I've had to learn all this stuff to, to speak on stages and uh, not make those same mistakes I did before. So getting back to you, NECA, you can uh, send me an email. And if you go through the free training at the school of radiance.com slash freebies, you're going to get an invitation for that um, complimentary 15 minute time with me. This is helpful if you're kind of new here and you're just kind of like, where do I start with products, with learning how to use products, with supplements, with biohacking, with you know the membership stuff, with the truly the radiant stuff. I'll walk you through that on where to get started based on where you're at with your budget, with your lifestyle, what's important to you. And there's just lots of ways that I can support you. All right. I don't, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed that I shared those stories, but uh, apparently you're kind of interested in it because you've all stayed on here <laughs> to hear me ramble about, you know, two of the most embarrassing moments of my life. I full on hyperventilated my nursing student colleague just had to fully take over. And I was so upset because I knew the content so well. And I think I still got a pretty good mark on it. <laughs> Yuko, thanks for sharing. You're welcome. And being so unreal. We're all people. We're, we're all, you know, people just doing the best we can in this thing called life. Uh, there's just some of us that are doing a little bit of a better job at it and staying grounded, centered, balanced, and aligned and living our mission and doing good things in the world and feeling fantastic and caring for our families and making positive impacts in the world. So make a positive impact with your beauty, right? Everyone likes to look at beautiful things. So when you start to care for yourself with your hair, your makeup, your skin, your words, your energy, people are going to want to be around you. It's a great way to make friends being radiant and being beautiful and not smelling bad. It's a great way to make friends. Oh gosh, Rachel, it's fine. Don't worry. We all have things like that. Yuko, you are an incredible speaker and to know you struggled is inspiring. Gives me hope myself too. <laughs> LOL, not smelling bad. You'd be surprised actually uh, what someone's smell tells me about them. Mm -hmm. I kid you not. If someone is really smelly, it usually means that they have some type of toxin in their body and they need to detox. And also if someone has really bad breath, it can also be a sign that their oral microbiome is totally off. And if that's the case, then there's probably some brain oral microbiome connection. We have all these nerves that go from our mouth to our brain. We forget about this. So if the oral microbiome is off, if you got a whole bunch of junk stuck in your tonsils, you're gonna have bad breath. So actually someone's smell can actually give me a lot of indication of, of their health and also their energy. I don't like stinky energy. Emily, thank you for sharing and being real. I believe it's important to go through hard things. It's one of the best teachers. Oh gosh, tell me about it. <laughs> this year, <laughs> this has been a year. Let's just say that. Thank goodness for adaptogens and biohacking. Yuko, yes, the breath is a huge indicator, 100%. Yeah. You know, when someone has bad breath, what do you do about it? Do you offer them a mint? 
There's actually a really good mouth rinse I'm going to share with you. I was not planning on talking about a mouth rinse, but you guys are all egging me on here. So anyways, my favorite mouth rinse is the TheraBreath. Healthy gums. This is not an advertisement. I'm just being funny. And this active ingredient I love for keeping the back of the throat clean and clear. It was also part of um, uh, COVID protocols. I was super nerded out on that stuff too. Settle pyridinium chloride 0.05% antiseptic mouthwash. So this color is the only one, the blue one, that actually has that specific ingredient. And this is just so good at, at um, keeping your, your oral cavity clear, which also ties into your respiratory tract too. So I love that mouth rinse. And yes, tongue scraping, love that. I also love oil pulling as well. Um, I do oil pulling actually for my Ayurvedic body type. Um, actually oiling the body and your different orifices is actually a good thing for specific Ayurvedic body types. Um, so sometimes I'll oil all of my orifices with a little avocado oil. And I love actually oil pulling as well. I know that sounds super strange what I just said, but it is a thing. Um, Pamela, what deodorant do you suggest? Well, I'm so glad that you asked Pamela because I actually have incredible toothpaste and deodorants, personal care products, as well as of course, skincare and makeup and hair care and dermal rolling supplies all on my skin shop that you can use your radiant rewards for. And Alice, hey Alice, I think they have a yellow color bottle now with that ingredient. Oh, good to know. I love that you know what that ingredient is. Seriously, I love that you know that. It makes me so happy. Rochelle, I've used that mouthwash wash before and oil pulling too. Good. Emily, will you show the mouthwash again? Pretty please. Wow, you guys are really loving this lesson. We're about 25 minutes over and you're all still here. Okay, so this is the blue TheraBreath. It's the blue one, but you have to check that it has this active ingredient. The other ones don't have this active ingredient. And it's acetyl peridinium chloride. Say no to Listerine, everybody. This stuff is terrible for your mouth. Okay, I don't sell that one. That one you can just pick up at like CVS or whatever. Okay, let's wrap things up. I have a hair appointment to get to as well. And a 3,000 word paper to finish up here um, during my hair appointment. I'm that person. So stay tuned for this upcoming paper. This paper is incredible. Just the amount of things that I've learned on nutrition for the skin, because I get asked this question all the time. What's the best skin diet? It's kind of a complicated answer. Uh, it's not going to be, okay, everybody eat beef and apples and you know take these supplements. It's so much more nuanced than that. And uh, this paper is just uh, turned out to be more of a doozy than I thought it would. But it's a great extension to my paper on oxidative stress status and its impacts on the skin. Because I didn't cover nutrition in that, it would have just been way too massive. So I knew I was going to be writing another article on nutrition in the skin. So this will help you out. You're going to love it. So thanks, everybody, for joining me here. I'm glad you all stayed. I'm glad I was able to amuse you. Um, with my super exciting, fun stories of my most embarrassing moments. And learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com. Check out my skin shop for all the products I love to recommend, hyaluronic acid serums. Um, there's actually uh, some great collagen peptide supplements on there as well. And for those of you who are curious about which products could be most helpful for you and rejuvenation strategies, book a one-on-one -on -one with me. Definitely book a one-on-one -on -one with me ASAP. I don't know how long I'll be able to do one-on-one -on -one sessions um, just with my schedule and things like that. And if you're curious how to use all the products and become your own skin pro, join my skincare tutorials. Early word savings is ending today. Do not wait on that. If you have not yet registered, I'm going to put the link in the chat. It is at the school of radiance dot com join now and in seven weeks i'm going to teach you to become your own skin pro how to actually use your products and how to add things like peels and retinols and serums and dermal rolling and lifestyle and biohacking and hair growth and actually applying your products in a more professional expert way 
And then of course, for the deeper dive stuff, the membership. So if you enjoy when I go a little bit deeper on certain things, I'm really holding back <laughs> when I do um, the, the live and, and free stuff. Here. The membership is the place to be. So if you have any questions, happy to help. As always, stay high vibe, stay beautiful, stay radiant, be a good human and do all these things because it's going to make you beautiful. It's going to make you beautiful from the inside out. Okay. And have a beautiful rest of your day, everybody. Mwah. Emily, can't wait to join the membership. Thank you. Join now. Yes, join the membership now. If you have a question, reach out to me. Um, but I'm going to put the link for the membership here. It's the schoolofradiance.com. And membership. Uh, actually, when you join the membership, you get 20% off of a initial skincare order. It's pretty huge. So if you need to stock up on a whole bunch of things, that's a great way to take advantage of special savings. It's kind of like as a gift to for you joining the membership. The membership is really about a year container. I mean, you're going to have access to the content for much longer than that. But basically, uh, the membership is where I take questions from everybody that's in the group. And twice a month we meet and we have a live session and I'll teach a lesson. So the next one is actually on hydration and water structuring. And we do a really bit of big deep dive on all the cool things that you can do to water. And we also do deep dives on everything else as well. The behind the scenes things that I just, I'm not comfortable talking about publicly kind of also because I don't want certain people to know that I know and do certain things because that wouldn't be my best kept secret. Uh, but I'm happy to, to share what those things are, uh, to cultivate your radiance so that you're a great human as well. Emily, looking forward to have you joining the membership. Okay. Love you all so much. Have a fabulous day. For those of you who just joined, don't worry. I'm going to be sharing this episode on the School of Radiance podcast on all things, this episode in particular, hyaluronic acid, and so much more. Uh, than you were bargaining for. All right. Love you all so much. See you again soon. Bye.